2025 has been a really exciting year for the world of hearing health and for us at Soundly. For starters, we've had around 10 million views of this channel. So assuming that you're one of them, thank you for spending time with us this year in 2025. We've also gotten to talk to thousands of you over at Soundly.com, either via text message or via phone. And we find those conversations are some of the most enriching parts of our day to day. So thank you for spending time here and over at Soundly.com. So for this video, I want to look back and also look forward at some of the most interesting things that have launched in 2025 and what we're expecting to come in 2026. So if you're early in your research and you're trying to get oriented, this will be a great video to talk you through some of the latest. And it will also give you a sense for what we think is coming up. If we haven't yet met, my name is Blake Cadwell. I'm the co-founder at Soundly.com. I'm also a hearing aid wearer. And in the last year, I've spent time in over 50 devices. Many of them I've released reviews of, which you can find here at this channel. You can also find in-depth information at Soundly.com. Soundly.com is one of the leading online destinations for hearing health research and shopping. We also have a free hearing test. So if you haven't had a chance to test your hearing yet, you can head over to the site and take our free test. It'll give you a sense for your hearing. You can also get a second opinion from our team if you want to better understand your chart. All right, with all that out of the way, let's dig into the world of hearing health in review. So every year, hearing aid wearers expect a certain number of releases from the known brands in the category. Typically, brands are on a one or a two year release cycle. In most cases, the leaders are on a two year release. So they'll typically release a product, then they'll wait a couple of years, they'll release the next generation of that product. It's not always precise science, but something like that is what you can tend to expect as you get used to the ebbs and flows in the hearing health category. Then you add in new brands like the one I'm holding, Nuance Audio Glasses, which is brand new in 2025, and whole new trends like what's happening right now in artificial intelligence as it relates to hearing health. So as I spent some time thinking back through 2025 and what's really changed in the hearing health category, a few things really stand out to me. We'll start with the new entrance. Now, back in 2022, when the FDA made over-the-counter hearing aids a possibility and put forward a framework for how to build an over-the-counter hearing aid that was up to standard, we saw a flood of devices enter the market, many of them very low quality. And we've seen slowly that number of devices sort of dwindle down. A lot of brands have stopped selling or have moved away from the market. A few have stayed, and those are the ones that we typically support here at Soundly.com. But we also saw a brand new entrant into the category, and that is Nuance Audio. Now, one of the reasons that Nuance Audio is so interesting is that it's a totally new form factor. It's not just a new brand, it's a totally new form factor. Maybe you've seen our reviews on this, but I'll just quickly explain it. There's an open-ear speaker on the armband, which plays sound down into the ear, and an array of microphones that tracks what you're looking at to send that sound back into your ears in real time. So essentially, you get an audio boost while you're wearing these devices. The product launched in February, we added it to our site a couple of months later, and we had a lot of really good success with folks putting these devices on. These glasses come in a couple of different colors, a couple of different styles, and the way we sell them at Soundly.com is with transition lenses. So they'll actually turn into a pair of sunglasses when you're outdoors or they're clear when you're inside. But you can swap the lenses out for prescription lenses at your local optometrist. Now, the vast majority of folks are still going with a behind-the-ear hearing aid or an in-the-ear hearing aid. But for the folks who have tried Nuance Audio glasses, we are getting some really positive feedback that this does some really unique things. Most importantly, it leaves the ear canal open so you don't have that plugged up feeling that sometimes folks have to get used to when they're wearing more traditional styles. We love this innovation. We also love that Nuance Audio comes from Essler Luxottica, which is the largest eyewear maker in the world. So we know it's a credible, well-backed brand well-built and also has the ability to integrate with prescription lenses. So this was an exciting new addition to the hearing health world in 2025. We have lots more information here on this channel where you can purchase these products in various colors and styles over at soundly.com or with our team via phone. The second big change that we saw in 2025 is that AI is making its way into more and more hearing devices. Now, AI has been a buzzword in the hearing health category for a long time. R&D teams have used machine learning to essentially assist in the development of new technology. But this year, we started to see a real maturing of a new class of hearing aids, especially in the prescription market, that have an onboard AI chip that's dedicated to artificial intelligence-related tasks. So a few of the brands that have launched the most robust AI offerings are Resound Vivia, which has a dedicated chip 
onboard the devices that's working in real time to sort out background noises. They used 13 million sound samples to train the AI and ultimately make it better in speech and noise context, which is where most people struggle. We also saw Starkey release an AI model with their Starkey Omega AI, which we've gotten great feedback around. I'm actually in the middle of my trial of that product, so I'll put out a review of that one soon. And then the original Phonax Fear Infinio launched late in 2024, but they came out with an update to their product with the Infinio Ultra, which is just a firmware update of the same product. And essentially it's building on this trend of artificial intelligence. So in my mind, we're still at the bleeding edge of what it means to have AI inside of hearing aids. And to my ear, and if you've watched my other videos, you'll hear that I don't always leave these devices in AI mode, but when I'm in a really complicated background noise situation, I can hear how hard they're working and how much they're doing to clean up signal. Ultimately, what gets me most excited is what might come in 2026, 2027, as AI continues to evolve and as the technology can be packed into a smaller and smaller space. Amazingly, Resound Vivia is the smallest receiver and canal device on the market, and it has a second AI chip inside. So we can really see where this is going. And I would imagine in a few years, it's really going to become the market standard. It's very exciting and still quite new in 2025. The next thing that we saw in 2025 is a maturing of the OTC market. Specifically, we saw folks beginning to gravitate towards OTC products like Sennheiser All Day Clear or Sony CREC20 that come from trusted manufacturers. So the same manufacturers that make in-clinic products are now making products which you can buy online. You can buy them at soundly.com. They ship to your home in a couple of days. You get remote support, but you're doing a lot of the programming. What's beginning to shift is that instead of a bunch of small upstart brands trying to sell devices online, we're seeing some of the industry giants put out OTC versions of their flagship products. And ultimately what we find is that that pushes the quality up. It means that OTC products are actually really good. Now they're not for everyone. You need to be within mild to moderate hearing loss and you need to be willing to program your own devices with a bit of support. But we're seeing a pretty steady shift towards these trusted well-built brands. It's one we expect to continue into 2026. And we expect that brands like Sennheiser, Sony, Jabra, which all come from large manufacturers, will lead the OTC market in 2026. One of the things I was really curious about as we headed into 2025 is what Apple would do with their AirPods Pro and the hearing aid feature that's built within it. So if you've been doing your research, you might have seen that in late 2024, Apple put an OTC hearing aid at the software layer of the AirPods Pro 2, and we knew they were going to come out with a new version of their device. Ultimately, what happened is when they launched the AirPods Pro 3, we saw a few incremental updates. The battery life's a little bit longer and there are a few adjustments to how they're handling sound. But for the most part, they didn't do a lot to rebuild their hearing aid features. But as we close out the year, Apple continues to be an excellent supplementary tool in your hearing health toolkit. I love my Apple AirPods Pro. I use them consistently on calls or when I'm streaming. But when I'm in a social situation or I'm with other people, I'm typically putting in my purpose-built hearing aids. Apple may do more in this space in the future, but I think their moves this year really indicated that they plan to stay with the AirPods Pro form factor and probably with the core feature set that they built out in the initial launch. Apple does seem to be continuing to look at this space. They released a couple of interesting studies this year, and they continue to talk about hearing health features in their marquee keynote events. That's something I really love to see. I think it makes hearing as a topic and some basic hearing technology even more accessible for more folks as we head into the new year. All right, so new brands, a new trend with AI along with some new releases and some subtle shifts in the OTC market. That's mostly what we've seen in 2025. Now, as we look ahead to 2026, let's say you're in research mode right now and you're thinking about what's next. Here's what I'm expecting. On the OTC front, I expect Sennheiser All Day Clear and Jabra Enhanced Select 700 to be our most popular behind the ear models at soundly.com. We continually see great performance in those products. They're excellent. They hold a really high standard in how they handle sound and they're both pretty affordable compared to the rest of the market. So we think those will probably be our leaders as we head into the new year in the receiver and canal or behind the ear format. On the OTC in-ear side, we continue to expect that Sony CREC20 will be our best seller. We don't see anything else in the market that's really coming close to the overall value and sound quality that we find in that product. Now we do see a lot of folks who are opting for 
Ergo 8, which we have a full review on. That's a bit more of a premium price point, but it's a great product and some people find it fits a little bit better in their ears. It's just a little bit smaller than Sony CREC20. On the prescription side, we're probably due for some updates to flagship products from various brands, but we'd expect to see a consistent shift towards smarter and more AI-enabled hearing aids. One trend that we're really watching is where Bluetooth goes within hearing instruments. So if you've been looking at Bluetooth-connected hearing aids, you probably know that most devices that sit behind the ear, which are the most common devices, have both Android and Apple capabilities, but manufacturers handle this in slightly different ways. So historically, the standard has been to use the purpose-built functionality inside of Android and Apple phones called MFI or ASHA and build the connection through that method. We're now starting to see that shake up a little bit with some brands choosing to use Bluetooth Classic, so both Signia and Phonak, also Sennheiser in the OTC market, they all use Bluetooth Classic, which operates a lot more like a standard pair of headphones. And then others are shifting towards Bluetooth low energy audio, which is more of a future facing technology, but Apple has yet to adopt it. So there's more to watch here. The state of play today is that if you have an Android or an iPhone, you'll have good options. We typically steer folks towards Sonova products. So that would be Sennheiser or Phonak if you have an Android device. You could also look at the newest Signia product if you have an Android device. And if you have an Apple device, you'll really be able to connect to any brand that has Bluetooth connectivity. So we'll be watching this one. I'm sure we'll do more videos as this becomes clearer in the marketplace in 2026. So if you subscribe to this channel or you've followed along at soundly.com, expect that we're going to roll out our best of videos in January and February. That will be our best overall hearing aids, best OTC, best invisible, we'll do a few different categories so that you can really use those as guides in your shopping. But if you're in the middle of your shopping now, just know there will be no real surprises in these videos. We consistently update our thinking as we see customer feedback and we do our own tests. And some of the brands I mentioned in this video are what we expect to really hero our best of videos in 2026. To those of you who have talked with us, purchased from us, or spent time with us here on this channel in 2025, I just wanna say thank you. Interacting with all of you, sharing our findings, and testing all of these devices is a real treat for me, both as a hearing aid wearer and as someone who enjoys watching this category grow and change. Thanks for your time today. If you wanna to talk to us, head over to soundly.com. Otherwise, we'll see you in 2026.